Several DC characters have fought alongside Batman as Robin. Bringing unique strengths to the role, each became an independent hero in their own right. Everyone knows Robin as the Boy Wonder, Batman's famous sidekick. They may even know Robin joined the Teen Titans in between his crime-fighting adventures with the Dark Knight. However, some might be surprised to learn that Dick Grayson wasn't the only Robin. There have been a few different Robins in DC Comics' main timeline. Unique in their own way, each version of the Robin character has graduated from being a sidekick to becoming one of the most formidable heroes around. While some took on new mantles or helped found new super teams, all the Robins have developed a riveting legacy. 1. Dick Grayson is Batman's adopted son and started the Robin legacy. Of all Robins, Dick Grayson is the most iconic of the bunch. Coming from a family of talented acrobats, Grayson grew up around the circus and soon joined the performances as the youngest member of the Flying Graysons. After witnessing his parents' tragic death, Bruce Wayne adopted young Grayson and eventually started training him to fight crime. It wasn't long before Robin started forming teams of his own with his peers. Grayson joined other capable sidekicks like Kid Flash, Aqualad, and Wonder Girl on the first roster of the Teen Titans. Grayson started his costumed career as the Boy Wonder, though he grew up in the role to become the Teen Wonder as well. In time, Dick Grayson realized he was a capable hero in his own right. Following a disagreement with Batman, Grayson decided to fight crime his own way and took up the name Nightwing. He found a new home in Bluthaven and set out to become the protector of his own city. Nightwing displayed exceptional leadership ability, and nearly every other hero looked at him with respect. Nightwing maintained his relationship with Batman, often returning to Gotham to assist his adopted father. He also maintained his relationship with other heroes as the leader of the Titans, who recently took over as DC's premier superhero team. 2. Jason Todd was the first Robin killed in action. Before becoming a ruthless vigilante, Jason Todd became the second young orphan to wear the iconic domino mask of Robin. Unlike Dick Grayson, Todd was a little rough around the edges. This came after Jason Todd's backstory and characterization were rewritten after Crisis on Infinite Earths. Jason proved to be a handful, even for Batman. While Grayson had sometimes found Batman's methods too harsh, Todd believed Batman didn't take matters far enough. This made him the most unpopular of all the Robins. Unfortunately, comic readers didn't like Jason Todd or DC's attempts to fill Dick Grayson's pixie boots. DC Comics decided to hold a phone-in vote that would determine whether Jason Todd would live or die in an upcoming storyline. Fans voted to kill young Jason Todd, resulting in his brutal murder at the hands of the Joker in the Death in the Family storyline. Nearly 20 years later, Jason Todd made his return. Raz al Ghul dug up his body and used a Lazarus pit to resurrect the former Robin. Todd eventually returned to Gotham City in a new role after years away training. He took on the alter ego of Red Hood, which was previously used by Joker before he became the Clown Prince of Crime. This transformation was easily the darkest of every Robin. Jason Todd earned a reputation as a ruthless anti-hero in his new role as Red Hood. Where Batman had avoided using firearms at all costs, Red Hood embraced them and employed lethal tactics. Despite his tough exterior, Red Hood eventually came to fight alongside the Bat Family. While Jason Todd was once one of DC's most unpopular heroes as the second Robin, Red Hood found increased popularity. 3. Tim Drake Earned the Robin mantle after figuring out Batman's secret identity, DC Comics introduced Tim Drake a few years after Jason Todd's brutal murder. Drake came from a wealthy family and was incredibly intelligent and athletic, much like Bruce Wayne. He was a lifelong fan of Batman and Robin, and he followed their exploits in the news. He noticed that after Jason Todd's death, Batman fell into an aggressive spiral. Tim Drake deduced that Dick Grayson was the first Robin using his knowledge of the Flying Grayson's aerial trapeze routine. He then discovered that Bruce Wayne was Batman and tried to convince Grayson to return to the role of Robin. While Grayson refused, Drake proven himself worthy of the mantle and Batman agreed to train him as the third Robin. Tim Drake spent years in the role of Robin after he graduated from his training. He operated solo and as part of the dynamic duo. Robin also led teams like Young Justice and the Teen Titans. When Bruce Wayne appeared to die during the Final Crisis event, everything chomped. 
Dick Grayson took up the mantle of Batman and asked Damian Wayne to be his Robin instead of Tim Drake. Tim decided to use the red Robin costume to conduct his own investigations and search for any potential traces of Bruce Wayne. Red Robin thwarted the League of Assassins in his global investigation, convincing Ra's al Ghul that Drake was a greater detective than Batman himself. He later returned as Robin and rejoined Batman while his successor forged his own path. 4. Stephanie Brown had a rough time as Robin, but found success as Batgirl. Stephanie Brown was raised by her criminal father, Clue Master. Deciding to spoil her father's schemes, Stephanie designed her own crime-fighting costume and called herself Spoiler. She eventually started dating Tim Drake after the duo started working together in costume. After Tim Drake quit to spend time with his father, Stephanie took over as Robin. Unfortunately, Stephanie Brown's tenure as the fourth Robin turned out to be short-lived. Brown struggled to prove herself to Batman, who fired her as Robin for disobeying his orders. She unknowingly kicked off a gang war in Gotham City trying to impress Batman. This seemingly led to her violent death at the hands of Black Mask, though Dr. Leslie Tompkins faked Stephanie's death and got her out of the city. When Stephanie Brown eventually returned to Gotham City, she befriended the Cassandra Kane version of Batgirl. However, Kane abandoned the role, and the original Batgirl, Baraba Gordon, offered the position to Stephanie. Brown established her own reputation as Batgirl and held the mantle for a good length of time, while Gordon assisted her from behind the scenes. Throughout her time in the Bat family, Stephanie Brown stayed close to both Cassandra Kane and Tim Drake. After the rebooting Flashpoint event and the new 52 reboot, Stephanie Brown took on her spoiler code name once more. She joined Cassandra Kane later and reclaimed the title of Batgirl together while they worked closely with Barbara Gordon once again. 5. Damian Wayne is Batman's biological son and followed in his father's footsteps. Damian Wayne is Bruce Wayne and Talia al Ghul's biological son, and of all Robins besides Dick Grayson, he's the perhaps the most successful. Bruce only learned of Damian's existence later in life when Talia left the boy in his care. Trained by the League of Assassins under his mother and grandfather's watchful eyes, Damian had a violent outlook and lacked morality. Bruce Wayne refused to give up on the boy, and in time, Damian became a capable Robin. Damien first worked alongside Dick Grayson, who'd become Batman after Bruce Wayne's death. He continued to act as Robin when Bruce reclaimed his title. While he left the Bat family to find his own path, Damien retained the Robin mantle because he believed it belonged to the rightful heir of Batman. While Damien Wayne still holds the Robin mantle in the current continuity, fans saw a future version of the character in the Batman of Babylon story by Grant Morrison and Andy Kubert. In one of Gotham City's dark potential futures, Damian Wayne took over as the Dark Knight following the death of Dick Grayson and a falling out with his father. Unlike most Robins, Damian actually followed the caped crusader's footsteps. Damian Wayne put his own unique spin on the Batman costume, though he also used brutal methods that his father wouldn't have approved. His career as Batman took a dark turn when he made a deal with Dr. Hurt and gained demonic abilities that kept him alive for years. In the Batman 666 continuity, Damian Wayne even raised the Batman of the future, Terry McGinnis. 6. Duke Thomas started as a vigilante, then became Batman's trusted agent. While Bruce Wayne never officially offered Duke Thomas the role of Robin, it came from the next highest authority in the Batcave. After the Joker's attack in the Endgame storyline took Duke's parents from him, he started operating on the streets. Alfred secretly outfitted Duke Thomas with his armored Robin gear and a juiced-up motorcycle. Duke Thomas joined a group of skilled kids who had been hand-selected by Alfred to tackle some of Gotham City's street-level problems. Unfortunately, Alfred's initiative failed, and all the Robins were outlawed by the police. Duke Thomas abandoned his Robin gear, but still assisted Bruce Wayne in taking back the city from Mr. Bloom during the Super Heavy storyline. Since Damian Wayne started operating on his own, Batman offered Duke Thomas a position as his newest partner. However, Duke Thomas was hesitant to return to the role of Robin. Thankfully, Batman had been developing plans for a new agent in Gotham City. He showed Duke Thomas a brand new costume and alter ego known as The Signal. Compared to every Robin, this makes Duke the only one to be given his new identity by Batman. 
inspired by the light that shone over Gotham City to alert Batman and terrify criminals, Duke Thomas became the signal and operated as Batman's agent during the day. Duke Thomas's role as Batman's shining light intensified when he discovered his latent photokinetic abilities that altered his perceptions and even allowed him to turn invisible. Duke's arguably more resourceful than all the Robins that officially helped Batman. Seven, Carrie Kelly worked with Batman in an alternate timeline. In another potential future, Bruce Wayne left his retirement to save Gotham City from new and old threats in Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns. The grizzled veteran inspired young Carrie Kelly to create her own Robin costume and join the fight. She saved Batman after an ill-fated encounter with the mutant gang, and he officially welcomed her to the team. As Batman's new Robin, Carrie Kelly helped him stop criminals like Two-Face and the Joker before his final battle with Superman. Carrie Kelly also inspired Batman to alter his tactics in saving Gotham City. He decided to allow Batman to die and started secretly training a guerrilla school of youthful fighters to strike back. Of course, Bruce Wayne couldn't stay retired for long, and he soon returned as Batman with Carrie Kelly faithfully at his side. However, she had left the Robin legacy behind to try out a few different costumed heroes that tied her to multiple legacies. In The Dark Knight Strikes Back, Carrie Kelly briefly became Catgirl in a battle against the original Robin, a Joker-enhanced Dick Grayson. Carrie Kelly became Batgirl in Frank Miller, Brian Azzarello, and Andy Kubert, the Master Race. When the Kandorian Kryptonians were restored, they attacked Earth and killed Batman. He was resurrected, and Carrie Kelly joined him as Batwoman. She later fought alongside Lara Supergirl and Frank Miller and Raphael Grandpa's Dark Knight Returns, The Golden Child. Over the course of her hero career, Carrie took on more identities than almost all the Robins in the mainstream DC universe. From Dick Grayson's leadership to Damian Wayne's dedication, each Robin has played a vital role in Batman's legacy. They've proven that the fight for justice isn't limited to one person, whether they fight alongside the Dark Knight or forge their own path. The legacy of the Robins continues to grow. With so many Robins to choose from, who do you think is Batman's greatest partner? Let us know in the comments below.